You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blackerby, and joining me today, as he does for every Charlie Tuesday here on the show, Charlie Five, Auburn message board legend. How are you, my friend? Doing well, Zach. Licking my wounds still. I think I've, I've put it past me and ready to move forward. Ready to move yeah. forward. It, it, it kind of went like a lot of people expected it to, but still, yeah. even though it happened, it's like, I don't know. It's just if they catch the ball. And, and mm-hmm. Justin Ferguson with the Auburn Observer, his Monday um, his Monday film room and his Eye opening. It was eye-opening. A lot of insight. But it's just like, man, it would just change. It, it would change the course of the game, just catching the football, and that's yep. something that really, um, that's what makes it hurt worse. I, I would be fine if I felt like Auburn got beat thirty-four to ten by Georgia, but part of that was Auburn beating itself, and that's just yeah. kind of one of those things that we thought would go away in the Brian Harson era, and it hasn't yet. Well, yes and no, like. The, our beating ourselves, uh, dropping passes is is not necessarily beating ourselves so much as it is just we don't really have the horses there. We don't have the guys there that can just make the plays. Uh, catching is not necessarily something that – I kind of feel like catching is just something that you're born with versus kind of learning how to catch. It's hard to learn how to catch something better. It's just sort of a skill that uh, you just have or you don't have, and uh, we just don't have it right now. We don't have those guys that can make that big. We don't have that Seth Williams that can just catch the ball over anybody or or make a play when they're wide open uh, in crunch time right now. Well, and Auburn's dealt with this in the past, and it seems like it's always those guys that played high school quarterback then they moved to wide receiver. Ironically, yeah. in this situation – Kobe, he Hudson, the best. yeah, he's our most sure-fired guy at the receiver position. As far as that, he still had, you know, he still struggles with a drop every now and then. But if he made some catches. Guy, yeah, I mean, he, he, he he's, he, I mean, he's a natural wide receiver. I mean, if you're throwing natural. ten balls to every guy, if you mention, you know, the top four or five receivers on Auburn's team, I think Kobe Hudson's going to have the highest success rate of them all. And he made some catches in that game in some really tight windows. Bo made some really good throws to him, especially on the sideline, and he just, man. He's he's developing. He like you said, he'll frustrate you a little bit every now and then. But at the end of the day, I mean, I think he's. I mean, is who's better than him? Who who's our better weapon that we have as a receiver? Not not named you know, Shanker. And you know, who's the who's the best receiver that we have? And I think after that game, it's probably for sure Kobe. Which is I'm yeah. not I'm not 100 percent sure that's where you want to be, but he is he's definitely the best the best option right now. Yeah, I would love Kobe as a number two option. Yes, you don't have that other guy that that's there, but and right when you think it's about to be Shanker after his awesome performance at LSU, he has a chance to score a touchdown in the first drive of the game for the Tiger to make a huge statement, and then it just hmm. he doesn't catch it. So what's crazy to me is I feel like he made he's made at least two or three catches that were harder than that this year, uh, and one especially in sure. one in, in particular in the game later in the game when Bo ripped one up the seam. Uh, for a big gain, he caught it like, and he could barely even see the ball through the, through the defender's helmet, and he made the play. But I mean, it yeah. is what it is. Throw could have been better, catch should have been made. Uh, it just, man, it's just not there right now. I was talking with a player's parent that listens to the show. Big fan, yeah. big fan of them. Um, but he was telling me that there is a walk-on receiver that the team absolutely loves. Yeah. And uh, I don't think he's ever going to crack the rotation, but maybe if they get desperate enough with the catches, but. Jackson Billings. I mean, he's a five ten, you know, yeah, five ten guy, kind of like a Will Hastings guy, sort of. Yeah, it's a similar storyline if he ever got on the field. But they apparently call him Waffle House in practice because he's always open, which I think is wow. awesome. I think that's that hilarious. Awesome. He's apparently <laughs> that's a great. great nickname. Um, that's a great he, he nickname. apparently like uh, is really impressive in practice. But once again, like I, I don't think they'll ever play him. But I thought that that uh, that nugget was interesting because that apparently. Is. Um, the player is talking to his father about, you know, how a lot of the teams talk about how good Jackson Billings is. So I thought that was worth mentioning. That's all. Seems like I remember his name a lot uh, several times in the uh, scrimmages in the fall. Uh, yeah. But I don't know. I mean, if that's if that ends up being the the best, the savior of the offense, we're, we're probably in pretty bad shape. <laughs> probably in pretty bad no shape. Question. No question. Bad shape. Um, 
All right, here's something I want to talk about. All right, let's do it. The storyline has emerged, Charlie Five, that the issue from Saturday was Bo Nix was throwing the football too hard. And I think this is the most ridiculous thing in the world. And, and I guess the origin of this is uh, the the pass to Deshaun Shivers where he kind of batted it up and then Georgia got the interception on that third and two early in the game. Right. Did he throw it too hard then? Maybe, maybe. I guarantee you Shivers is not saying that. I guarantee no. you none of the pass catchers are saying that about Bo Nix. And this is such a ridiculous storyline to me. Um because I, I guess it's emerging from one of the TV commentators making a comment about that afterwards, like both threw it too hard to Sean Shivers. He needs to lead him a little bit more. It's like, uh, okay, maybe yeah, that the, one big play, but the re, like if you watch that Auburn Georgia game, Charlie five and say, Oh, the reason Auburn's offense struggled is because Bo Nix threw the ball too hard. Please just I mean, get out of here. That is craziness. I, I do hear that we – I mean, I have seen a little bit more uh, being critical on receivers after this game. But, like, for the most part, you don't you don't hear people just bang on Demetrius Robertson for continuing to drop passes or Sean for dropping two, unfortunately, in big situations. This It's always something to do. Bo didn't hit somebody in the hands good enough. Bo threw it – too hard like are too hard what are we talking about are we playing intramural flag football no you're in the sec catching passes at the highest level of college football catch the catch the ball catch the ball if it's if it hits you in the face that's a you problem right it hits you in the face and here D- demetrius robertson on fourth and nine it almost hit him in the face like the bow is not perfect by any means don't get me wrong he had definitely has his weaknesses, but seven drops uh, based off what uh, Pro Football Focus uh, put out there, especially yep. in the in the timing of them, crucial third downs, fourth downs that extend drives. Uh, I mean, after Demetrius Robertson drops the fourth and nine, which was right on the money, by the way, ripped it across the middle, right on the money. They throw the bomb and go up twenty four to three and put us out of our misery. So, I mean, come on, guys. I, I mean, the same person that says he throws it too hard will say he has a noodle arm. We'll talk about him not being able to throw it hard enough. Like He looks hurt. He looks yeah. hurt. Yeah, Stop. come on, guys. Come on. That is, that is the if, – if you want to – if you want to talk about him, you know, exiting the pocket a little too much, trying to do too much, you know what, fine. We can have that argument. Sure. But he throws it too hard. Like, what what type of sports did you play growing up? I mean, come on. Catch I mean, the ball. Every few years, one of these guys gets drafted, and it's like, you know, we've all heard stories about Brett Favre's receivers would like break their fingers catching his passes. Or I remember when Jameis Winston got drafted and he was practicing with them, uh, with the Bucks, and like the gloves would rip because he they, they were catching him. That's just part of it. He's getting part the football the to you, and it's your job as a receiver to get open and catch the football. And, and in that particular that particular play, that particular play, you got to get the ball into Sean's ha- hands fat, quick. He's got to get the ball in his hand. He's there. He's open. He needs the ball in his hands, and he needs to get up to speed quick because Nicobe Nicobe Dean's not a slow guy at all, uh, and we he proved that. But you know, you can't just what are you going to do? Just lob one in there and and let let him run under it while you got the fastest linebacker probably in the country just beaming down on him. Come on. Come on, guys. Yeah, it's a third and two. You need two yards. He got the two exactly. yards. Two to catch, yards. Catch it and fall. You've got it. But I don't know. I, it's just the this constant Bo Nix not being good enough. And is he perfect? No. But no. I think he's a lot better than he was a year ago. It's just sure. there, there are so many issues to look at where it's just Auburn is in a different class than what Georgia is right now. And even right. on your home turf, you just kind of get bullied around and there's nothing you can do about it on either side of the football. And to say that the issue, when you're listing issues, if you want to list 10 issues that happened from Saturday, Bo Nix throwing the football throwing hard, hard should not I'll, be anywhere near the top 10. Don't even talk to me. Don't even talk to me. Like, so, that's not uh, even worth the conversation. I just don't that's, get I was blown away by how many people commented on YouTube and then I've seen it on Twitter. And who – Oh, I was at a staff meeting at work Monday morning and people brought it up. And I was like, what? Are you serious? And so, yeah, yeah. there we go. Here we go. I don't know. Hey, t- sorry to cut you off, Charlie Five. Today's show brought to you by our friends at Frisky Whiskey. I know uh, a lot of folks came into town 
from Georgia on I-85. They stopped in Frisky Whiskey on the way in. A bunch of folks reached out and talked about it, and I think that is awesome. So you found a great selection. You found great deals all at Frisky Whiskey. Yeah, just type it in your phone's GPS is the easy way to get there, but um, it's right off of I-85 once you get into Georgia or right before you're getting to Alabama, depending on which way you're coming from. And uh, 10,000 square feet of selection, awesome prices. They can price things lower because they've got great relationships with distributors as well as Georgia's tax laws. So you got to love that. Check out our friends at Frisky Whiskey. Also, head over to prizepicks.com or download their free app in your phone's app store to check out uh, the leaders in daily fantasy sports. It's daily fantasy made easy. I love prize picks. I know that you will too. Not a lot of fa- uh, places have daily college fantasy. They do. Uh, so head over to prizepicks.com. And when you make that deposit, use promo code locked on. You can get a deposit match of up to $100. Don't hesitate. Check it out today. Prizepicks.com. Use promo code locked on or go to the app store today. Prize picks is daily fantasy made easy. Another let's thing, go. let's go, baby. Another thing I want to talk about, Charlie Five, is let's just kind of do a let's just kind of do a progress report real quick. Let's sure. do a progress report regarding Mike Bobo, Auburn offensive coordinator. His son committed over the weekend. We can touch on that at the end of the segment if you want. But I think the um, what do you think? How do you think Mike Bobo has done so far as an offensive coordinator this season? Well. It's hard. It's really hard to say because of the how far behind the eight ball is he is on talent. But what metric are we looking at to decide is he is he is he moving us in the right direction? Is he is he are we right where we were last year? I, I haven't quite. I don't, I don't really know how to answer that question. I right. do know we average more yards per play this year than we did last year. Uh, we have played Georgia. Georgia is going to knock a lot of the stats down on a lot of people. We scored more points on Georgia, and I think had more yards on Georgia. Uh, this year than we did last year. Uh, I personally like aspects of what's happening. I think we can uh, sometimes the flow of the game, we tend to abandon the run a little bit. But at the same time, I don't know if the run was the answer uh, in that game uh, right. it, because we would have holes and they just close so fast. They just, cl- I mean, it was, it's the team speed that Georgia has on defense is incredible. Um, it, from a play call, if you just take, if you don't, if you don't look at execution, I'm calling a play where I'm going to have somebody open. They just have to make the play. I have been thoroughly impressed there. That first yes. drive was scripted, absolutely beautiful. There were several big third down plays, third and distance, where we had guys, uh, we just couldn't get them. You know, you talk about one of the things that Bo, I would say, probably the worst play of the game for Bo. We had a double. We had a double, uh, like a little pump and go double hit, double move on both sides of the field, and both guys were open. And uh, I mean, for touchdowns, and Bo, for whatever reason, the clock was moving a little fast in his head, and he couldn't get it to him. For, so, from strictly a, uh, from strictly a, like a play calling people open standpoint, yeah. I love that. I love that. Um, right. But at the same time, you got to call plays that your players can execute. So. What's the answer there? I have no idea. I have no idea. But yeah, I, mean, uh, this, I like where we're going. It's this weird line of you got to score more than 10 points against Georgia, but also no one else has been able to do that so far. Right. And when you look at it individually, like drive by drive, it's like, okay, I like what they did there. A lot of different things. Uh, yeah. I, I love having a fullback. I love all the eye that we're running. Then, you know, two plays later, we'll spread it out. And, and you know, you make the defense think, and you're doing a lot of different things. I love that, and that's something that we've all kind of wanted going into this season, and we're getting that. Right. But, yeah, like you said, I mean, I, I talked about it yesterday. The third and long with the drop to Shedrick Jackson, it's like, what else are you supposed to do as a coach? Um, and then, you, exactly. know, you mentioned the, the fourth down. I think it was I think it was fourth and 10 to Demetrius Robertson. Like, that's a big deal. And all these drops, uh, you know, Shanker dropping it in the end zone. Shivers dropping on the third and two. I mean, there's just so many drops where it's like, at what point is that on coaching and whose fault is it? It's your exactly. offense. Does that fall yeah. on you? Um, and then also like if you, it, it's just so, it, it just, it stinks wasting so many plays because oh, I know, especially when you're going up against such a good team and Auburn's offensive line is so inconsistent and like the double move. I mean, that's probably like the longest Bo had in the pocket 
if he just would have stayed still and just stared at, you know, his left receiver the whole time, it would have been fine. Yeah. But it, it's just, you know, the inconsistencies of then, you know, he feels uncomfortable because normally he doesn't have three seconds or four seconds. Then all yeah, the clock fine. moves faster because he's got PTSD, who knows? But right. it's always moved Hard. fast too from the yeah. time he's got and, there as well. But. So, uh, I don't know how I feel yet. I, I like – I definitely like the – I guess the way I feel is I feel like there's always a play that can – he's he's able to get matchups unlike we were before down the field, uh, across the middle, uh, with the tight end. He's able to get matchups. I'm just not sure we're there talent-wise be able to execute it yet. So it may sound like, you know – sort of moral victory type stuff from the offensive coordinator is why I, I'm I'm somewhat happy with the trajectory. But, it, I mean, how do you – I don't know how to put a value on it yet. I don't know how to pull it, put a value well, on it. I, I, I mean, you, you know. and I were unhappy with uh, his, his game plan against Penn State. And then you look at it, and what he put together against LSU wasn't very good. Bo Nix just was a magician. And then, you know uh, – I'm willing to give him a pass against Georgia. I think these next few weeks are going to be really big for him because Arkansas is a team you should be able to move the football on. And well, Ole Miss is a team that you should be able to move the football on. Same with A&M. These, these next few games are going to be really important with how we should view Mike Bobo moving forward. Sure, sure. I don't know that I necessarily dislike the game plan that much against Penn State. The the okay. game, the, the end of the game, maybe there may be certain plays that you wish you'd have back. But my God, you could if we if if you went there, you would go. I mean, you could go. You could pick apart every single game. Uh, I'll, I'll just go back to this. I'll go back to this. We have two really good running backs. Yes, we got to figure out more ways to get them the ball, whether it be in the passing game, uh, different w- figuring out what our offensive line can do better and and do that with them. Uh, but they got to touch the ball more than I think Tank touched the ball like. Uh, 14 or 15 times, uh, 10 rushes, three or four catches. Um, Jarquez barely s- saw the ball at all. Uh, they got to touch the ball more. They're our best playmakers that we have between them and Shanker. So what do you do with that moving forward, and how do you how are you able to scheme them going going forward? I don't think it's ever going to be just – uh, oh, we got to have. We're going to have exactly fifty runs and or fifty percent runs and exactly fifty percent passes. The game flow is going to depend is going to have a lot to do with that. Uh, and I, I, he does seem to kind of maybe want to abandon the run a little early, but at the same time, you got to go with what I guess you got to go with what you think is going to work. Uh, we just got to got to execute, got to execute, which yeah. I feel like is a lot of what we used to say under under Gus, or that's a lot what Gus used to say a lot was the plays were there, we're just not executing. Yeah, and, but they uh, weren't there. Like, guys were that's not true. – guys were blanketed. That's the true, fact too. That guys are getting open, like Lindsay and I were talking about on yesterday's show. They're doing the hard part, Charlie Five. It's just, yeah. uh, okay, you, you're getting open against the number one defense in college football. You just can't catch the ball. Now, the issue is – I don't know how you fix that at this point of the season. No, I think that's, I think that's the problem. And I don't it know, is. like, I don't think regardless of how many jugs that you catch or, you know, how much you, you work with, with catching drills and all that with quarterbacks. Like, I just don't know if you can fix that before you go to Fayetteville on Saturday. That's, that's the problem. Yeah. But at the same time, I don't think, uh, Arkansas's defense is not anywhere in the ball game with I don't think Penn State or or Georgia. So I, I agree. I don't, I'm not hitting the panic button on offense yet. I think you're probably still going to see some offensive success, you know, probably this coming Saturday and then moving forward on basically every game. Maybe we'll struggle a little bit at Texas A&M uh, on the road, but I'm not ready. I'm not. I'm not overreacting because at the beginning of the season, if you told me we'd be four and two with a win at LSU to start the year and say that's a pretty solid – we're on a pretty solid track to finish, you know, where we kind of need to be year one to build uh, moving forward. So, not yeah. ready to hit panic yet. No, I'm not either, but I do think this one's a big one. The yeah. Because going Very into this season, I predicted us before and two. I predicted the loss to Penn State and the loss to Georgia. I right. changed it the week of because I got excited. But um, <laughs> I, I thought we would win at LSU. I thought we'd lose at Penn State, and I thought we would lose against Georgia. Now, when we were doing this prediction going into the season, I thought Arkansas would be a joke, and they're not. I think Arkansas is a really good football team. 
And so I don't know. I don't know exactly how to predict this one quite yet. My gut. Well, let's do this in a second. Let's do this in a second. Charlie sure five, is. our guest today on Charlie Tuesday. Today's show brought to you by our friends at Rock Auto. You can save time and money when you use rockauto.com. Why choose to spend 30%, 50%, or even 100% more for the same parts from a chain store or a car dealership? Just go to Rock Auto. It's that easy. Rockauto.com. Go there right now and see all the parts available for your car, truck, or SUV. And right, locked on Auburn in their How Did You Hear About Us box so they know that we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, and all the parts your car will ever need. That is at rockauto.com. Also, it's going to be a close one on Saturday. You're going to be sweating it out. You need sweat block. Sweat block is doctor created, doctor recommended, works for up to seven days per use. They have what they call the dry shirt guarantee. Look, you don't have to worry about, you know, uh, messing up your shirts or your confidence or anything like that. So if this is something that you need, go check it out at sweatblock.com. You can get more information there. But uh, you can get it for 20% off at sweatblock.com. All you have to do is use promo code locked on. Promo code locked on. Um, 20% off at sweatblock.com. Also available at Amazon or CVS. Final few minutes as we are joined by the one and only Charlie Five. Yeah, one, one, little, yeah, go ahead. One little, one little storyline other that, that I think is pretty ridiculous that I've heard a lot too from different beat riders and fans and this, that, and the other. We had seven drops. Oh, we already fired the wide receiver coach. Who are we going to fire now? As if it's trying to take a zinger at Brian Harson. Saying that is so incredibly dumb. That's like saying we're going to fire an interim head coach for losing a few games after you fired the head coach midseason. That is the dumbest take you can ever have. So if you've said that, stop it. It makes no sense whatsoever. I tweeted that. I, I so I tweeted that out there in the game, and people are like, "It's not." I was being sarcastic, little tongue. Yeah, I know. I know you were. Yeah, and, and people, of course, didn't take it that way. But right. I was just trying to prove a point where it's like, yeah, maybe there was other things going on there. Maybe it was sure. who he was working with and, and things like that. But right. whatever. No, I, I'm glad you bring that up. I'm glad you bring that up. And the amount of folks that thought I was serious and got mad at me. Hey, maybe that's a good sign. Maybe maybe sure. it's not that many folks that actually feel that way. So that's right. good. That's good. Um, all right, let's talk about this Arkansas team. My gut, I'm leaning that Arkansas wins this game. I, I don't feel as confident about it, and I need you to call me out on this if I'm being a hypocrite. Okay. Because yesterday, I, I said something similar to what you just said. We all expected Auburn to lose. I expected Auburn to lose by multiple scores. I think pretty much all of us here on the show last week did that. Right. And even though that happened, it still is like it, it, it has made me lose confidence in this team but I know I shouldn't. I know I shouldn't because like we just said, this is exactly where we predicted this team to be, most right. of us, going into the season. So I think I am being a little hypocritical about how I'm feeling about this game, but the more I look at Arkansas and the way that they were able to move the football uh, against Ole Miss, I I, I think um, I, I just think we're going to have a hard time going up to Fayetteville. I, I, I don't know. I really don't know how to explain it. So uh – Arkansas's offense, to me, obviously they can put up points, but it is all predicated on. It's kind of like Gus. It's kind of like Gus's offense. If they can run the ball with the quarterback, if they can run the ball with the quarterback, if they can run the ball with the wide with the the two running backs they have, sure. that makes their pass game. Because if you look at KJ Jefferson's completion, like yards per completion, it's like seventh or eighth in the country it's 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 insane like he just makes big big plays through the air and that's because they're able to run the ball there's a lot of misdirection read option type stuff that's the thing that I don't think they're going to have a whole lot of success with I, I think that we're going to be able to slow them down with the run game which will in theory I would I would assume it would help sort of uh you know curb the passing game the big plays from the passing game I just don't see them scoring 50 points on on this defense, regardless of, you know, how weak or how vulnerable we think the secondary secondary is. I think the defensive line and the linebackers are going to have a big get a big game, and I just don't see them being able to really stop. I think this is a game you'll see 20, 30, 40 touches out of the you know out of the running backs really pound them because that there's definitely success to be had there. So I honestly think we win by 10 points. Plus, I think we went by ten wow. plus points. So I would definitely take the de de definitely take the points and maybe parlay it with the money line if you can do that on your book for wow. betonline.ag. Betonline.ag. Okay. Yeah. The um, 
What are you more concerned about? You more concerned about Auburn's offense or Auburn's defense on Saturday? Uh, defense on Saturday, for sure. Uh, I, if, like I said, if you can stop the run, if you can stop the run, you stop Arkansas. They've and, done a good job limiting dual threat quarterbacks earlier in the year. Different class of talent, obviously, sure. when you look at you know Akron, Alabama State, and Georgia State. Different, just totally different class. But the mental reps have to be there to some extent. That's got to help some, right? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, I just man thinking about Zakobi McLean, keying on KJ Jefferson. Like, come on, that's that's a mismatch, especially in the run game. And I am uh, I'm excited. I'm I'm excited to see the guy. I think the defense is going to have a really big game, and then offense. We're probably not going to do anything special. Just you know, just run, play action, just like you know, handle a handle a team that you can you can score points on. I think that's kind of what we're gonna that that should be what we see Saturday. That's, that's what, what I'm expecting to, to see. That's sure. what needs to happen. Yes. This doesn't make sense, but I'm almost a little more concerned about the offense because I I think the defense matches up fine against right. Arkansas. Um, if I'm Arkansas, I'm going after Nehemiah Pritchett every play until proven otherwise, which I think he can handle it. It's just he hasn't yet. I no. mean, what happened to him Saturday was bad. Like he was, was really, bad. really like he was out of position almost all the time. Exactly. And that's not him. He's better than that. There's got to so, be some. There's. It's just got to be. It's got to be the learning curve here. On the all. I mean, this guy. This kid was. What was he like? Number one in the country in yards per like attempt last year. Like defended. I mean, he was. He, was, he had. He had one of the highest grades in yards per attempt defended, I believe, if you look at it on Pro Football Focus last year. And, like, he literally looks lost. So, I mean, is it is it just him getting beat or is it or is it the scheme? That's what I can't quite – I can't quite figure out. I cannot figure it out. But he does always seem to be the one getting beat. He's the one getting picked on. It, and it's, yeah. It's well, you're not going to pick on Roger. No, and- no. Kaufman's on the field, but like you just don't really hear his name. I think Kaufman's actually being pretty good this year, but you know, we're just not really yeah. talking about him, which as a corner, that's usually a good thing. But you hear all of these guys, you know, they talk about, you know, they're coming back uh, another year in the system and they talk about how they don't have to think anymore and they could just right. play. And it almost feels like that's what's happening. And I hate that we're going to lose pretty much all of our defensive backs after the season. And it's like, oh, we're going to have to do this over again. <laughs> like, we're going to have to go through this again next year as far yeah. as them kind of getting the reps and all of that. Like, I hope not. But, like, well, McCreary's gone. Smoke's gone. By Darius Knighton's gone. Nehemiah's yeah. maybe gone, possibly. So, I mean, there's just going to be a lot back. of guys leaving. Yeah, he may need to come back. You're right. He may need to come back for sure. Yeah, but, you know, you know we had a fairly uh, – I think we had a pretty fairly decent recruiting class last year from defensive back where – we're not. We're kind of slow on on. I think getting guys this year, but man, I just think we're about to just absolutely pillage the. We yeah, we might just absolutely pillage the portal this this off season. We're gonna I have. Think. I got a hot. Have to hit it. I'd be cool if we got like three or four more recruits and just all transfers after that. So I, get like fifth sign fifteen high school guys and ten transfer ten transfers. Give it to me. Give it to yeah. me. I would be all about that. And I know. I will the, the yeah. reason the reason people are going to be against that Charlie five is because people only look at recruiting rankings and eventually whether it's two four seven or on three whatever it may be eventually someone is going to count transfers and they're going to grade transfers as your class right. and then yep. people won't care anymore people will be like oh that's great because I think the people that are grading these things will be like oh a former four star or a three star that's really like come in and has a year and a half worth of experience is going right. to be very valuable. And exactly. like, and so I, I just, I am all about it. If, if we got 15 high school kids, yeah, we're at 12 right now. So if we got 15 high school kids and then got 10 more. And then maybe you get a little bit of wiggle room. If, uh, if a certain amount of people transfer out, like I would well, be, that, I would be all about that. I think we, I think maybe this year, the rule has changed a little bit as far as, um, you know, last year, if you lost a guy, it it didn't matter. You didn't gain. You didn't gain a spot. So I think that's kind of freed up this year. Shoot, we may be, it's maybe time to seven. Isn't that right? Seven guys have to transfer out for that to happen. Right, something like that. And I think you might see that we might hit that number on the head. Uh, I don't. I'm not saying I know who that is, but I definitely think there's some cult, a culture change. Well, uh, that is also, still in the process. I think if you get close. 
coaches may go up and be like, hey, I need you to leave. Sorry. Oh, yeah, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Hey, you got thoughts on Drew Bobo? Uh, I think he's going to be a three-year starter at center. I think he's going to be a, he's going to play center and he's going to play through at least three years. Uh, probably, probably red shirt or, or sit behind somebody next year. And then yeah. I think he's going to take over a uh, smart kid, athletic kid plays basketball, if I'm not mistaken. Visually and, well. uh, and he moves good. He's powerful. And I, Coach I think Pete that's with on three, he posted a couple of, uh, gifs of him like playing basketball. The guy can move for a 300 pound kid, man. Yes, yes. I think that's going to be the next guy that you see, you know, in the middle for quite a while. I'm, I'm excited to have him. Big pickup. Uh, yeah, I think it'd be great. Need to keep it going. Need to keep him going. Damari Austin, our running back from Woodward Academy, said that he was – we still had the – he said he still had some heat for us this week. So, I told him I was already sweaty. So, we'll see what that means. Well, you need sweat block. block. You need to head over to sweatblock.com. Sweat block. <laughs> yeah, to fix that. The heat's coming this week apparently. So, we'll see. Charlie five. How can people find you and hear you, my friend? Yeah, you can find me on uh, Twitter at the underscore Charlie underscore five right there on the bottom. Or you can find me on Monday through Friday on the dad bod golf pod. Let's go. The only daily golf podcast out there. Let's do Let's it. Let's go. Awesome, man. Appreciate you as always. Follow me on Twitter at Z black on Twitter at locked on Auburn and on Instagram at Auburn podcast. Tune in tomorrow for a war report Wednesday right here on locked on Auburn.